In an isolated rural corner of South Carolina, there is an area of swampland that has come to gain no small amount of notoriety. Is this inhospitable region home to one of North America's most infamous cryptids? Join us as we delve into the secret of Skapor Swamp. On a cold midweek morning in February of 2008, Bob Rawson whispered goodbye to his sleeping wife, Dixie, before slipping out of his front door to go to work. It was still dark as he crossed the open ground between the farmhouse and the spot where the family truck was parked, but as he neared his vehicle, his hand ferreting in a cavernous jacket pocket for his keys, he caught sight of something which caused him to take a sharp intake of breath. The switchboard operator for the Lee County Sheriff's Department had struggled to understand the content of the panicked phone call she had subsequently received from Mr. Rawson. He needed help urgently, as a crime had been committed. No, nobody had been hurt, and no, he didn't know who was responsible, but he and his family were not safe, and they needed police protection, immediately. The two deputies who were dispatched to the Rawson farmstead were intercepted by the homeowner well before they had chance to turn off the main highway and onto the road leading up to his property. Torches in hand, they had followed closely behind as he had half run to where his truck was situated, gesticulating in an animated fashion at the front of the parked vehicle. In the dim torchlight, they could see that extensive damage had been caused to the vehicle's exterior but it was only when they looked more closely that they realised why Rawson was so agitated. Parts of the front wheel arches on both sides of the truck had been twisted and bent outwards, so they now jutted out at right angles from the main chassis. The surface of these damaged strips of metal was scratched and covered with indentations, almost as if they had been chewed upon. Damage of a similar nature was to be found on the vehicle's front grille, where in places... The metal had been pierced right through, as if bitten by a wild animal of some kind. Struggling to come up with a satisfactory hypothesis, the two officers had called for a crime scene examiner, in a bid to identify who, or what, was responsible. Samples taken from the damaged metalwork were sent off for analysis, and a week later, it was confirmed that canine DNA had been recovered from the swabs. But when detectives reattended to share this information, Rawson had merely shaken his head in disbelief. Without speaking a word, he had led the officers across his property to a field in which the bodies of a number of dead animals lay. In addition to the remains of several domesticated cats, there were a number of dead cow carcasses and a corpse of a recently departed coyote. In calm and clear terms, Mr. Rawson explained that the DNA the analysts had found most likely belonged to the coyote, but it had come from the mouth of whatever had killed and eaten the animal before subsequently attacking his truck. The Rawson farm was being stalked by an unseen attacker, one which resided in the neighbouring swamp and had been haunting the area for over 20 years. The cities of Sumter and Bishopsville are as indistinct as any other found dotted around the rural reaches of South Carolina. Indeed, were it not for the region of dense swampland which separates them, these two communities may well have remained in quiet anonymity, with no reason whatsoever to invite the attention of the national press. But even from the day that this inhospitable patch of land was first named, 
it has flirted with notoriety. What most local historians agree upon is that Scape or Swamp earned its title from the phrase Escaped Whore Swamp, in reference to a long past incident involving a local female of ill repute. It is here, though, that the disagreements begin, as it appears that the region possesses more than its fair share of stories involving ladies of the night. One tale has the woman in question being driven out of a nearby town by the angry wives of her clients. Another, more colourful version is believed to have occurred during the Revolutionary War, when a group of local militiamen surprised an encampment of British soldiers, who were entertaining some of the local prostitutes. Having captured their opponents, the revolutionaries then drove the women away and deeper into the marshland. But the incident which would truly propel Scape or Swamp into the national consciousness would occur many years later, in the early hours of the 29th of June, 1988. At approximately two o'clock that morning, a local youth by the name of Christopher Davis was driving home from his shift at a nearby diner, when his car sustained a flat tyre. Davis coasted the vehicle to a spot just off the main road, and immediately set about changing the tyre in question. The highway had been quiet, with no other vehicles passing by. He had just deposited the damaged tyre in the boot of his car, and was wiping the dirt from his hands, when there was a rustling sound in the bushes behind him. When he turned around to look, there was nobody there, but as he closed the boot lid of his car, he heard the rustling sound again. Attempting to stifle a growing feeling of apprehension, Davis slowly walked back to the passenger side door and retrieved a torch from the glove box. Switching it on, he directed the beam into the bushes where the noise had emanated from, but there was nothing to be seen. As he took a step backwards away from the foliage, lowering the torch so that the light was now pointing towards the ground, a huge dark shape suddenly emerged from the brush. Davis instinctively raised the torch again to illuminate the figure, before immediately dropping it to the ground and crying out in terror. Bolting over to the driver's side door, the terrified teen frantically fumbled for the door handle, his mind utterly traumatised by what he had just seen. The creature that had been advancing towards him was between six and seven feet tall, dark green in colour, with water glistening and dripping from the scales that covered its naked body. He leapt into the driver's seat and immediately gunned the ignition, only for the car to be rocked from side to side by a violent impact. With a sickening feeling, Davis glanced in his mirror to see a ghoulish face leering back at him through the car's rear window. A pair of menacing red eyes regarded him, which almost seemed to glow when the moonlight caught them, whilst a mouth full of misshapen teeth opened and closed beneath them. The teen let out another cry, flooring the pedal and sending the car hurtling back up onto the highway. Over the roar of the engine, he heard several loud bangs, and then a scrabbling noise on the roof of the car directly above him, before another heavy impact shook the vehicle. Panicking, he slammed down hard on the brakes, and watched in disbelief as a huge shape was immediately thrown onto the road in front of him. In the intense beams of the car headlights, he could see that the creature was broad and muscular, with three talon claws at the end of each of its hands. For a moment, it lay motionless, before its head suddenly snapped to the side, staring back at him. In a heartbeat, Davis again floored the accelerator, the car shooting off down the highway and leaving the creature lying where it fell. Several days later, when the teenager learned that the local sheriff's office was investigating a report in Browntown of a parked car having been attacked by a mysterious creature, he called the police. Deputies attended his home address, photographing the deep scratch marks on the boot and roof of his vehicle, as well as a missing wing mirror, before asking him to take them back to the scene of the encounter. Davis showed the officers the tyre marks which demonstrated where he had braked hard to dislodge the creature from his roof, before leading them onto the bushes from where it had first emerged. 
strange tracks were discovered in the thick mud just inside the tree line, and so plaster casts were taken and sent off to the South Carolina Marine Resources Department for analysis. A few days later, Sheriff Liston Truesdale received a phone call from a Dr. Evans, informing him that the casts had been of a large foot with three clawed toes, and that they did not match anything that the department kept on file. As the weeks progressed, there would be further overnight attacks on vehicles, with deep gouges and bite marks found by their owners the following morning. These incidents, as well as further sightings of a large lizard-like creature would intensify during the following month, all centred on a five-mile patch of swampland on the outskirts of Bishopsville. Then, on August the 5th, an off-duty airman reported that he had shot and wounded a creature that had attacked him on Highway 15. Since then, there have only been sporadic sightings of the Scapor Lizard Man, but these have stubbornly persisted up until the present day. As beguiling as the tale is of a lizard man emerging from his swamp to spend his evenings chasing passing motorists before attacking their vehicles, the Scapor story is not without its flaws. And one of the greatest undermining factors of the tale is the testimony of Kenneth Orr, the man who was alleged to have injured the beast in the weeks following the original Christopher Davis encounter. When the airman contacted police to report his actions, he also handed over what appeared to be blood and tissue samples he had recovered from the scene of the incident. Two days later, Orr found himself being arrested for illegal possession of a firearm and making a false report to the police. When he subsequently appeared at trial, he stated to the court that he had fabricated the entire incident for attention. No records of the tissue analysis he had provided or the reasons for his sudden change of heart have ever been revealed prompting suspicions about the integrity of the police investigation. Perhaps curiously, however, the Scapor Swamp Monster is only one of a colourful gallery of reptilian monsters who are alleged to haunt the highways and byways of the United States. Indeed, it appears that the Sasquatches which apparently saturate the North American continent have a significant amount of cold-blooded competition. During the 1950s, the city of Loveland, Ohio, was plagued by sightings of oversized aquatic monsters. Motorists reported that whilst driving at night, they had seen what they described as tall, frog-like entities either crossing the main highways ahead of them or fleeing into the safety of the nearby bodies of water. Over time, these entities became known as the Loveland Frogs with reports concerning the creatures continuing until the spring of 1972. Following a fresh wave of nocturnal sightings, police officers shot and killed a four-foot-long iguana, which was believed to have escaped from a local collector. With this animal's death, sightings of the Loveland Frog also quickly ceased. Several months later, two youths who were fishing on the shores of a lake in British Columbia reported seeing a scaly creature which had sharp claws and spikes on its head, swimming through the nearby waters. When further witnesses to the incident also later came forward, the legend of the Thetis Lake Monster was born. However, much like the Scapor Lizard Man and Loveland Frogs before it, this new creature ended up being dismissed as the product of overactive imaginations. Investigators were quick to point out that the description of the Canadian cryptid was strikingly similar to the creature featured in the movie Monster from the Surf, which had been screened on local television only four days before. Returning to the dark and foreboding depths of Scapor Swamp, the authorities maintain that the creature which was encountered is likely to be either an alligator or a large monitor lizard. In poor weather or lighting, and under severe levels of stress, they propose that witnesses have misidentified everyday creatures, believing that they were standing upright on two legs when they were more likely either clambering or rearing up in an aggressive manner. The damage to motor vehicles has been laid at the door of coyotes and bears, or even attributed to human offenders. Much as it was alleged that pranksters have sought to cash in on the famed Mothman sightings in West Virginia during the 1960s, 
There are suggestions that local residents have manufactured sightings of the lizard man in order to increase tourism in the region. And yet, with still further sightings having been reported since the attacks on the Rawson household in 2008, perceptions seem to be slowly moving away from a rational explanation towards one that is far more speculative in nature. Some experts continue to draw parallels between the mysterious tracks recovered by local deputies and monsters from a far bygone age. Dr. Rudy Mankey, a naturalist from the University of South Carolina, believes it is entirely possible that if the Scapor cryptid does indeed exist, it may be descended from some form of bipedal dinosaur. Historically, some tall birds such as emus and ostriches once possessed scales and a thick hide, as opposed to their more feathery descendants. Could this be where the three-toed animal tracks have really originated from? As the technology we carry on our person continues to evolve at a startling rate, it seems highly likely that the secrets of Scape or Swamp will not manage to remain an enigma for much longer. Be this one of the most successful hoaxes in American history, or a true evolutionary wonder waiting to be uncovered, it is inevitable that at some future point, the mystery of the Lizardman must be solved, once and for all.